to my channel. So today I wanted to do something different than last time because uh, the other week I talked a lot to the camera like almost non-stop about my portrait paintings and also about the projects I want to work on. So today I thought it would be nice to do something different and to show you a lot of my work process. So in a moment I'm gonna take you upstairs and do a painting, a still life painting. Actually I started it last Wednesday. It is a still life of olives made by my aunt Aurora in Sardinia and they are very delicious. We got a very large container with those olives uh, like one year ago or maybe even longer and now the container is almost empty. I painted the olives once before but back then they were green and now as they get a bit older they start to brown a bit but they still look very lovely so I thought it would be a nice um, nice experiment to make a new painting of them the other one is sold and this one is gonna be one of the still lives I have to make for an exhibition I have in France this summer so and while I am painting and I'm trying to show you most of the process but the video can't be that long so I'm gonna cut, cut out uh, some pieces. While I paint I want to talk to you a bit about consistency in, uh, in one's portfolio and what consistency means to me in my work and my art business and why it has been on my mind. So let's go upstairs in the studio. So last Sunday I went to The Hague with uh, my husband and the children to deliver a portrait I painted of the President of the International Court of Justice and the court is in the Peace Palace in The Hague, it's a beautiful building and it was very funny because we went by car so we were asked to park the car in front of the front door and we took a nice photograph of it, it was very funny. So the president was very happy with the painting and I was also uh, very pleased to see that the colors I had chosen uh, really matched the ones of the room, uh, the red room where the painting will be uh, exhibited. We chose a nice spot for it and now, well, it's the end of this chapter which took very long. Uh, the painting process was not without uh, difficulties, but I'm happy with the results. Uh, if you want to see it, then you can go to my Instagram or watch my previous video where I uh, tell something about the painting. But it was not varnished back then. Now it looks even better. So delivering the portrait and uh, also talking about all the portrait studies I made in the last uh, few years, um, in the past video, a memory came to my mind about the Classical Art Academy when I studied uh, some years ago, before starting my own independent journey as an artist. I remember that one time we had this um, evaluation, well, we, we, we often had these uh, evaluations uh, during the year and I remember that in one case particularly um, some teachers said seeing my portraits that I should become a portrait painter and I remember feeling a bit annoyed when they say that because I had no intention to become a portrait painter with all respect to portrait painters of course but I, I thought it, <laughs> it would be very boring to paint only portraits because I was appreciating um, 
the landscape, uh, the landscape painting as a genre, which previously, uh, before I went to the art academy, I thought was the like the uh, last thing I would want to do, paint a landscape. But um, yeah, I came to love it in the end. Uh, and I like painting portraits, but I thought, yeah, that's not the only thing I want to do. And I think the fact that they say, said that uh, also um, telling me that being a portrait painter was uh, something that could bring me uh, a lot of money. I thought, no, I, I don't want it. And I think it's, it's this perfect example of the today's preference for speci specialization in art. One topic, one technique, and if you try to do uh, something different than what people are used to see from you, then it's it's uh, it's often not seen as something positive. I could never do it. Paint only only landscapes or only portraits or only in oils, only in one technique, um, and so. I paint landscapes, still lifes, I paint in watercolors and oil painting, I do portraits, uh, drawings, and uh, now also illustrations. Uh, I like I like the versatility of, of my job, and that's also why I chose to be an artist. But now I worry whether my followers feel confused or even annoyed by the fact that I changed subjects and technique a lot. I got my first fans uh, and art clients by painting a la prima from life. And I got a bit of, um, yeah, not fame for it, but <laughs> something like that. And uh, yeah, mostly landscapes and still lives which uh, were my main subjects for a long while. But now that I expand my preferences and work also from imagination and in watercolors, well, I'm, I'm a bit afraid that some people, some fans of mine will go away and uh, find another person to buy from, which is not bad, of course, but well, uh, it is a worry lately. And because I was worrying about it. Yeah, it is a struggle because I, at one side, I just want to paint whatever I, I, I want uh, in whatever way I want. And on the other hand, I am becoming more and more serious about my art business as a proper business that I have to take care of and um, work s in a smart way to really reach clients. Um, anyway, I, I thought maybe I should do a course. So I did an online course about branding. I hear about branding all the time and Instagram just puts all these uh, ads for me about branding and running a business. <laughs> so I thought maybe um, maybe it's a good thing to uh, to actually do something about trying to find the right customers, the right clients for my work, because I, I don't sell that much yet. So I did this online branding course and it was a very interesting one because what I thought about branding was that you have to present your work um, in a certain way, in a certain style and really choose uh, one way of showing yourself. So I thought that it was about like painting only portraits or only uh, owning one technique that I would have to limit myself. But this branding course was interesting because 
it showed me that it's not only about what you make uh, as art, as in art and artworks, but it is more about uh, keeping to your key values and presenting your work or yourself in a consistent way. So in this course, the students were asked to interview their dream clients uh, to, yeah, to know them even better and to know what they want and what they love. And to really keep those people in mind um, when you're writing or presenting anything online. So I did that. I did a few of these interviews and I discovered that, yes, the clients I have are interested in my art, in my artwork, but they are also curious about me, my thoughts, my process and my preferences. And I was so happy to hear that, that, that really set my mind at ease because if branding is about consistency, then I can say uh, that I'm quite a consistent person <laughs> and uh, no one and nothing is going to change uh, what, what is in my essence. I will never stop loving food and raw nature or, and crafts. I will always strive to capture beauty <clears throat> or uh, a cert certain poetic or magical atmosphere. I do not seek to make political or social statement. I don't want to show what is ugly or perverse. And there is one other thing that is certain. I will always be in love with all colors and I will always want to seek to put them together in ways that are um, harmonious. One thing that um, that is always on my mind is food. <laughs> but maybe that's because I spent my childhood in Sardinia and uh, over there food is very important. And uh, the culinary tradition of Sardinia is um, what shaped me and my culinary preferences as well. My, my family is also working in a restaurant and uh, well, my father has a pizzeria and I worked there for many, many years uh, from the age of 13. And the thing I liked most <clears throat> was when we would not serve pizzas, but uh, me and my mother would have these um, special dinner evenings for <clears throat> a small group of people with uh, a certain menu. It would be so nice because uh, you could really <clears throat> put a lot of energy in uh, presenting the, the food in a certain way and making all the dishes um, match well together. So this love for food of mine, you, you can see as well in, in my painting. So I love to paint fruits prunes, apricots, grapes, uh, other gifts of nature like artichokes uh, but, and uh, also fish like with all these brilliant colors. And I always choose food that I actually like to eat. When there is something that I don't like, which is very rare, uh, then I don't like to paint it. So in the past few years, I painted a lot of fruits, but what I also would like to do is paint actual dishes. I think that's very difficult, but that would, well, that's also an appealing idea for me. So beautiful dishes. I think that most of my work is, um, maybe all of my work is kind of nostalgic. At least, well, that's the feeling I'm told my paintings often uh, evoke. It's a feeling I like. I think that people feel that way because the memories we cherish the most are memories from beautiful things. And that's exactly what I like to paint. A quiet moment between the rocks at the sea, 
summer fruits in the shade with a few drops of, of sunlight falling upon them. My son and I in the woods in autumn. Absorbing the magical atmosphere there is when there are mushrooms. Or the feeling of freedom when you can lay down in the grass all alone, blowing dandelion seeds in the air without, without, a, without a worry on your mind. So just feeling that the singular moment, wishing it would last forever. That's what my art is about. At least I think so. <laughs> I often like to use children in my works because my most beautiful carefree memories are from my childhood, as I think is the case with a lot of people. My best memory is uh, a very vivid one. It was on a sunny spring day in Sardinia and uh, I climbed in a big olive tree on my father's land all the way to the top. There the branches formed a, a kind of net on which I could lay. My eyes fixed on the blue sky and feeling a soft breeze in my hair indicating it was not summer yet so it was nice and sunny but not too hot <laughs> and i heard the birds sing in the nearby bushes and trees i don't know how long i laid there but it felt almost like it was for hours sometimes when i think about it it feels like i'm still there on the tree I really hope that I will continue to have a lot of beautiful memories and feelings to paint. And the nice thing is that now I can also translate uh, my imagination into paint. And that's just something I always dreamed of doing. I remember saying that as a child, when I grow up, I hope I will learn to paint what I have in my mind. And that's what I try to do now, but I tell you, it is really, really hard. So that's where I think I am consistent and my work is consistent. It's all about the beauty, um, aesthetic beauty, but more so just beautiful feelings and memories I want to capture. And even if one time my palette is more green and the other time I tend to um, prefer more red paintings or I like to paint watercolors or maybe uh, something more loose or more details or even a drawing, I think the theme of my work, the subject of my work will not really change in, in essence. I only hope that other people see that as well and that they will continue to uh, follow me and see that what my work is really about.
you see me standing in front of today's result of the painting. Um, it is not done yet. I started painting a bit later than usual today because I just couldn't get my children out of bed to go to the daycare in time. They were so sleepy and I thought maybe just let them sleep a little bit longer. So I tried to do as much as I could um, on the olive part, but it was so hard for me today because Wednesday I painted the olives uh, looking at colors that were completely different than today. I think because uh, two days have passed, they just got all brown. Well, they were so nice and fresh out of the container. They look like uh, like jewelry, and now they are all matte and just brown. So it was uh, it was a hard hard part of painting. But I think that tomorrow I will take uh, an hour or so to finish this part of the painting, hoping that it I will succeed. I hope that you liked to see this uh, painting process. If you do, please let me know. Or if you would like to see something else, uh, something a bit different, quicker or uh, slower, please drop a comment and I will know what to do next time to bring more value to you. So, until next week, I hope.